Welcome to Beat Diabetes, and we're going to do another one of our episodes of the Books and Quotes series, and today we'll be looking at Ginny Rule's book, Blood Sugar 101. This is not a new book. It's been around since, I think, 2008, uh, but when I read it, it, was, uh, it really confirmed a lot of things I was seeing. No, she did not make a convert out of me because I was already low carb by that point, but she confirmed a lot of things and taught me some things as well. And as I look back now, I can see that uh, some of my thinking has been, really has its roots in some of her ideas and books. So I have to give her credit. Uh, part of what I say these days and part of the success I've had in helping people uh, has been due to Jenny Rule. Now, she and I differ on a couple of things. Uh, probably the major point at least the last time I read one of her books, she wasn't real thrilled about the idea of intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating. She just couldn't see it. And uh, I disagree completely with that. I think it's a very valuable part of the way to beat diabetes. But apart from that, she uh, is very solid and she's done a lot of research. She's very smart, <laughs> very smart. And she has studied a lot. So this is her kind of her major book. It's called uh, Blood Sugar 101, What They Don't Tell You About Diabetes. And uh, in a way, she's very much like me because she has, uh, she's not a doctor. She's learned a lot by studying, but she's learned a lot by just testing herself and seeing how various foods and meals affect her blood sugar. Uh, she tests her glucose like crazy, or at least she did. Uh, at this point in her life, she probably doesn't need to test it nearly so much, just as I don't need to test it as much. And if it weren't for this uh, YouTube channel, I wouldn't be testing it very much uh, at all because I just know what works and what doesn't, although I, I would never give up on it entirely. So just a little short uh, look at uh, a few of the quotes from her book, and we're going to start at the very beginning in her introduction. And she says this, diabetes is a terrible disease. It causes impotence, blindness, kidney failure, amputation, and heart attacks and death, or heart attack death. So uh, yeah, she's absolutely right. But then what she says next is what's kind of interesting. She says, but type two diabetes is also a wonderful disease because all these dreadful outcomes are optional. In other words, you don't have to put up with it. No matter how severe your diabetes might be at diagnosis, it is unique among the serious chronic diseases in that it is the only condition where you, the patient, with only a small amount of help from your doctor and no heroic medical interventions can achieve normal health. Boy, she said a mouthful there and it, she is so right. Uh, there's a lot of diseases you can get and all you can do is take your medicine and hope you get lucky and hope it all works out. But with diabetes, there are some very powerful steps you can take that are much more powerful than any medication you could ever take. And uh, that's what gives you hope. That's what gives you enthusiasm, excitement, even euphoria. When you understand there's something I can do about it, I don't have to sit around singing, nobody knows the troubles I've seen. I can go to work and make changes. I can extend my life by the grace of God. I, I, I can do things to fix this. I like fixing things and life is complicated. Life comes at you in a lot of different ways. And there are some things in life you can't do a single thing about. Sad to say, that's the truth. There are, <laughs> there are cases where something hard has blindsided you and it wouldn't matter how much you brainstormed, how much research you did, you, you couldn't fix it, you couldn't do much about it. But diabetes is not that way, you can do a lot. So she says, well, it's a wonderful disease in this one sense. A lot of the, uh, the complications, in fact, I'd say almost all of them are optional. You don't have to put up with it. So love it, love it, love it. And that's been my philosophy. And I think that sense of hope that that people get from understanding this and from my channel, uh, it motivates people to, to, to beat diabetes. Diabetes is not just knowing what to do. It's being motivated with the hope that you can succeed, you can see victory. All right, here's another uh, quote from her. I think this is fascinating. She says, she's talking about first phase insulin and your, when your body senses you've just had a meal, there is within a, a 10 to 15 minutes a first phase insulin and then there's another insulin release a little bit later. So she's talking about that first phase 
of insulin re release from your pancreas. She says the amount of insulin a normal person's beta cells secrete during the first phase insulin release is believed to be very close to the amount they needed to process the glucose produced by previous meals. If they usually eat a lot of carbohydrate, their body will release more insulin at the start of the next meal, even if that meal doesn't contain much carbohydrate. If this large dose of first phase insulin doesn't meet up with enough incoming carbohydrate, it may drive the normal person's blood sugar low. And this explains why it is that sometimes you can test your blood sugar before a meal and then after, afterward, an hour or so afterwards, and it's gone down instead of up. You're saying, what in the world is that all about? And uh, what she's saying here is something I have mentioned a few times, and that is your pancreas and your metabolic system has a memory. It remembers how you've been eating lately. And if you've been eating a lot of carbs and suddenly you go low carb, your pancreas is so used to producing lots of insulin to kind of match up with all those carbs you've been eating in past meals that even though your meal is now a low carb meal, it remembers how it's been happening over the last some days. So it's pumping out lots of insulin as though it had a high carb meal, even though it did not. And what that means is instead of your blood sugar going up, it may go down because your pancreas is overproducing because it remembers, it remembers how you've been eating all this while. And, uh, and the reverse is true as well. If you've been eating very low carb for the last several weeks, and it's used to that, your pancreas now remembers this is how we eat these days. We eat low carb and suddenly you eat a high carb meal. It's going to get tricked. It's going to get fooled. It's going to think you're doing what you did yesterday and the day before and the day before that. So if it's used to low carb and suddenly you eat a high carb meal, it is not going to reduce, uh, produce much insulin. It's going to think you're doing just what you did yesterday. And as a result, your blood sugar could end up eventually going too high because it just didn't match the insulin. Now, I think that's why, and this is important. If you're used to going low carb and you've been eating low carb for the last several months and your, your body is used to low carb, used to meals with 10, 15, 20 grams of carbs, maybe, but probably less than that per meal. And suddenly you pig out, you go to grandma's house and she serves you a big helping of mashed potatoes and some uh, spaghetti. And she gives you a nice piece of pine. You're just too polite to grandma. You're just too nice. And so you just eat it all. Your pancreas isn't ready for that. It's used to all this low carb eating you've been doing for these last weeks and months. So it's chilling out. It's not dumping out much insulin. It feels like, well, we're just going to do what we've been doing yesterday and the day before. But instead, you've got all these carbs going on and you bounce way up. Now, let's say you go home from grandma's house and you're kind of curious. I wonder what's happening to my blood sugar. So hour, hour and a half, two hours after you ate and you're back home, you test your blood sugar and it's way high. And you're thinking, well, all this low carb eating, I'm still insulin resistant. I haven't helped myself a single bit. The minute I have one high carb meal, boom, here it goes through the roof. I haven't helped myself much. All I've done is dodged and avoided diabetes, but I haven't really, I'm not any more insulin sensitive than I ever was. You may be. It's just that your carb can't, rem your, excuse me, your pancreas cannot remember you ever eating a high carb meal in the last weeks and months. So when you finally do, it's not ready for it. And that's why some people that are low carb will go get a, uh, one of these glucose tolerance tests, the oral kind where you drink the sweet liquid and it bounces way high. Your body's not ready for it. It's not prepared. And uh, your, your doctor says, well, looking at this test, uh, you are very insulin resistant. You may not be as much so as you thought. So your body has a memory and uh, it's not wise. <laughs> used to be a commercial said, it's not wise to fool mother nature. It's not wise to fool your body too much. So if you're used to low carb and you decide to eat a high carb meal, just expect you're probably going to have a, a pretty significant bump in your blood sugar because your body just remembers that 
That's not how we normally eat, and I'm not going to produce much insulin. So there. Okay, one more quote. This is actually from a study, a, a, a continual glucose monitor study they did back when they weren't all that popular. They've become a lot more popular since th then. But they, they attached uh, these uh, patches to a number of people and checked how their blood sugar spiked after meals. And uh, she talks about how normal people react to high carb meals. And that's important. If you just started testing yourself, you know one thing. I know how I react to high carb meals. That's all you know because you haven't done tests on normal people. But this is a test they did, a research they did on a bunch of normal people. She says this, throughout the night, their fasting blood glucose concentration remained flat in the low 80 milligrams per deciliter range. So they stayed in the 80s, low 80s. Normal people, mind you, people with no metabolic problems, no insulin resistance, they stayed in the low 80s throughout the night. But she says, after a high carb meal, their blood sugar rose to a median value of near 125 milligrams per deciliter for a brief period. So they bounced up to 125 after a high carb meal. Now, no diabetic will stay that low after a high carb meal. They'll be up to 200, 300, maybe 400 after a high carb meal. But these are normal people, not diabetics, not even close to diabetics, not pre-diabetics, just normal folks, healthy, metabolically healthy people. They bounced up to 125. And that happened around 45 minutes. They hit their peak around 45 minutes after eating. Normal person. Uh, they started going down. They were at uh, under 100 by an hour and 15 minutes. By two hours, they were back in the 80s. So that's the normal way. Uh, she says, notice even the highest of these normal readings is far below the cutoff most doctors consider to be the high end of normal. So uh, a lot of doctors are saying, well, it's fine if you bounce up to 140, 160, 180. Uh, it, it, basically, their idea is if you can just stay a little bit south of 200 milligrams per deciliter, uh, you're doing pretty good. And they consider that almost normal. But she's like, no, normal is you bounce up to about 125 or a little under in 45 minutes time. By two hours, you're back in the 80s. Now, you know, if you're 65 years old and you're overweight and you've got diabetes, that's not going to be your case. You can't do a lot about it immediately. What you can do is eat foods that are going to mimic the normal blood sugar rise. I can't keep up with what she just described. I couldn't eat a high carb meal and stay <laughs> around 125 as a peak. I couldn't do it. But what I can do is eat a steak and a salad or eat a couple of uh, boiled eggs and maybe a piece of cheese. And I can stay under 125. So I can mimic their glucose range by limiting my diet. And what people are discovering, and she's going to talk about this further in the book. We'll look at it in another episode. But what we're, we're discovering is if you can keep your glucose, your glucose peaks down, at a reasonable level, maybe it can't be 125, but maybe you can make it to 135, then you can avoid the complications. You can avoid the early death. You can avoid the amputations. You can avoid the strokes and the heart attacks if you can simply keep those glucose peaks. And when I say peak, I mean your blood sugar is going to go up. It's going to stop at a certain point. And it's going to fall back down. And uh, the peak is the, the top part. It's high as you're going to go after a certain meal. And if you can keep those peaks at a reasonable level, you have just done yourself a world of good. So that is the goal. Now, if it takes me eating low carb the rest of my life, which it looks like it will, and I'm, I'm good with that, that's far better than saying, well, I just want to eat normal. I want to eat like every American wants to eat. I'm going to eat everything everybody else does. I'm going to eat normal, quote, normal. Well, guess what, folks? Americans are not eating normal. So we've got to understand that the what we must do is try to get as close as we can to a normal glucose range. Forget about eating normal. Just try to get to a normal glucose range with your glucose peaks after your meals. And if you never can quite get to normal, you know, if a normal person gets to 125 and starts heading back down, you say, well, 
Sorry, Dennis, I can't do it. I've been low carb for a couple of years and I'm still not there. If you can at least get to 140, that's a whole lot better than jumping up to 200, 225, 250 every time you eat. So get as close as you can. Now, you may be depressed. You're saying, well, Dennis, when I wake up in the morning, I'm at 250. Well, yeah, but you don't have to stay that way. The more you work on those peaks and keep those in range, the more your levels will come down until finally you're waking up in the morning at 100 and then you're waking up in the morning at 95. So the goal is not necessarily to try to match a 16-year-old, skinny, somewhat muscular young man. I couldn't do that. I'm not 16. (laughs) I'm not that skinny. I'm not that muscular. And uh, I, I just can't match him. But I'm doing pretty good for Dennis. For being an old guy like I am, with a dad bod and uh, not having, uh, I have these diabetes tendencies anyway. I'm doing pretty good for Dennis. No, don't compare me to a 16 year old, but compared to the Dennis that I would be if I ate high carb meals all the time and snacks and chips and candy and pie and all kinds of sugary things and all kinds of white flour products, bread rolls, little Debbie treats, compared to that Dennis, I'm a million miles ahead of that guy. I am so much better than that guy. That is my comparison. I want to beat the kind of dentist I would be if I hadn't intervened with a low-carb diet. And you, whether your name is Joe or Mary or Susan or Chuck or Rocky, whatever your name is, don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself to some young person. But be determined, I am going to do so much better than the me that would be had I not gone low carb and cut out all the junk and the processed foods and the sugars and the carbs and the pretzels and the chips and the white bread and the brown bread and the rice and the potatoes. I'm going to do so much better. And I'm convinced of one thing. I'm convinced that however long I have, and I don't know how long I have, but however long I have, I'm going to live longer And I'm going to be healthier than the dentist I would be had I not made some serious changes in my diet and lifestyle. That can be your case as well. If you've recently been diagnosed with diabetes and you've just discovered this channel, let me recommend that you go to our uploads page, which will give you access to every diabetic video we've posted since we began. As you work your way through all our videos, I believe you'll find the help you need. A link to our uploads page is in the description.